Hi, I'm Lee. Welcome to the channel. I hope you're having a lovely day. I'm a short, overweight, middle-aged white dude. I've got thinning brown hair, black gloss. I'm wearing a dark gray t-shirt, light gray hoodie, dark gray trousers and light blue shoes. And in this video, I'm standing in front of a Polestar 2 because we're going to do an overview. Now, I'm very deliberate in calling it an overview because I don't feel like I'm doing reviews of the cars because what may work for me may not work for you. What I need from a car may not be what you need from a car. And so I just want to give you an overview of all the features that I can think of with the car and let you decide what works for you. So the Polestar 2, this is the top of the line performance model, which I said to them was going to be completely wasted on me, but they did it anyway. I think the entry level model starts at about 70, 74, 75,000, somewhere around there, and then goes up and you can do very, there's a long range model dual motor, um, and then this is obviously the dual motor with the performance pack. Um, interesting enough, just on that is the way that Polestar sells the car. So you can buy the sort of the basic package and then you can add various different packs, which for me, it doesn't really work. I, I feel it's a little bit like you're flying Jetstar or like some, you know, some low-cost carrier. Like, you know, oh, you want to have checked-in luggage, that costs extra. Oh, you want food, that's extra. Oh, you want to sit on the inside, no, that's extra. But someone did point out to me a good reason why that might be. So, for example, one of the things that the car doesn't come with as standard is a pack called the Pilot Pack, which is adaptive cruise control and lane keep assist and all that kind of stuff. Um, and that's $3,400 extra. Now, I feel that should be included, but I was chatting to a, a younger fella who's really into cars, and they were saying, well, they would never use adaptive cruise or lane keepers because they like actually, you know, driving the car and they don't want the car to drive them. And so if they can get the car for cheaper without having stuff they're never going to use, that's really good for them. So I can see the logic of that thing. So let's have a chat about the look of the car. Now, I really like the look. It is quite boxy, which is interesting because generally with electric cars, you sort of want to go for the most aerodynamic. So it's a little bit more boxy than you'd expect from an electric car. But I like the look. It's quite different looking. Definitely gets quite a few looks when you're driving around. People are like, oh, what is that? So that's, if you like that, that's kind of cool. My wife really doesn't like the look of it. So I can see how it can be sort of, it's either, you either like it or you don't. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about the look because... I'm not a car person, so I don't really care that much about the looks of cars. It does light up really nice at night. Like the the, 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 the brake lights on the back. Mm, really cool. I'll hopefully, hopefully tonight I'll be able to shoot some stuff here and I'll be playing some B-roll over myself now. So that's the look of the car, fairly straightforward. Um, you do get three sets of keys and this is what the key looks like. It's um, not small. And so you've got your sort of standard, um, you know, open boot button, lock and unlock. So I can just, there we go. Magic. Magic. And then hold and it closes the boot. Um, you can set up your phone with the Polestar app as a key. So instead of carrying the keys, you could just carry your phone. You can also um, unlock and lock the car, you can turn on the climate control. So if you wanna get the car heated before you actually get there, you can turn that on from the app. I can't show it to you on my phone because you need all three keys to set up the app with the car and I didn't have all three keys when I picked up the cars. You don't need, anyway, yeah, it doesn't work. Um, let's have a look at the front. So because it's an electric car, there is no engine in the front so you got space for some storage now the way you open it up is there is a handle down here by the right hand leg of the driver and you get a very beepy beep and then also once you come around here there is a little yellow latch that you need to flick over here because if you try and lift it just doesn't lift you have to flick the yellow latch for that clip so we've just got a few this is my 10 meter charging cable which is probably a little bit too long and then i've got just a normal extension cord which is a little bit sort of shielded and then this is the wall charger that the car comes with so you can just plug this into any wall socket uh, which is what we did uh, up in sydney at the airbnb and charge it admittedly slowly um, just off anything i also like the fact that it comes with uh, the safety triangle so that's just sort of standard again volvo uh, which is the parent company Polestar, big into safety, and it comes with a tire repair kit, which a lot of electric cars these days don't have spare tires. So I like the fact that it comes with that. 
So, um, yeah, so that is the front. I will say one thing, and I mean, this isn't a big deal, and maybe there is a way to reset this, but for someone who is vertically challenged, such as myself, to close the frunk, I've got to go on my tippy toes to reach it, and then I can pull it down. A feature that I really like about the Polestar 2 is the way that the kick thing for the boot works. So you know how normally when you want to open up one of these kick things, you're sort of doing the, the semi-circle dance of trying to find... You know, you, you feel like you're doing a bit of Turkish or Greece hoppa kind of dancing. Well, the beauty of this is that their sensor on the back here is one meter long. So you can actually kick sort of anywhere towards the middle. And that will then open the boot, which is nice. And then obviously you can then kick from almost anywhere and it'll then close the boot. Well, now that we're having so much fun kicking, let's actually open the boot and have a look at the space in here. So whilst that's opening, let's have a look at some of the features of the boot. Uh, first of all, you've got, if you don't want to use the kickstand, there is a button here. You've also got a button to close the boot so you can lock it and close it. I presume, let's actually test this, push the button, push it again, push and hold. That now sets the height to that, so you can adjust the height that it goes up to. So if you've got a, a, you know, a garage roof that's low, you can set it to a lower height. There is also a button down here, just above the license plate, where you can open and close the boot. Um, the first thing that I notice is it's quite large. Like you wouldn't think for a sedan that you get this much space, but you actually get quite a bit of space in here. And there's some nice features. So there's this thing here, which I wasn't really sure what it was for, but apparently um, these hooks here are for shopping bags and this suspender thing is for suspending stuff. Uh, so that's handy. You also have quite a substantial lower boot, if you would. It's an odd shape. So it's like when I was trying to get like camera boxes and cases, like Pelican cases and stuff, it was a bit weird to sort of get stuff in there. But if you put clothes and things, it's fine. So it'd be nice if it was a more like a square or something, but you know, glad to have it. You then have this flap over here on the left, which I swear, I, someone told me this is for champagne bottles. I'm sure it'll take other bottles as well, but that's nice. You have your 12 volt lighter socket thingy here. You've got these um, things there. I'm not sure what they're for, but I'm sure Simon will tell me in a bit. Um, you've got this pocket over here, which is a decent size like I was keeping my drone bag and stuff in there and then you've got hooks on the side here which not being a car person I don't know what you hook into there but there's hooks to hooks things into um, you can fold the seats down and you also have a little ski hole thing here so let me show you how that works you just pop that down there and then so I'm gonna focus on the ski hole when you fold down the center console here there's just a little bit of material and Hello! <laughs> and then to lower your seats, um, there's just a handle here on the back and they come down and there you go. They don't go completely flat, but they go pretty flat. And that is all the features of the boot of the Polestar 2. So now that we've had a look at the boot, I think that's pretty much all the features that I want to look at on the outside of the car. Now let's actually go into the car and have a look at how everything works on the inside. Oh, wait, one last thing before we go in. Something that I really like about this car a feature is how the mirrors are completely sort of sealed and recessed into the mirror holder. Uh, for those who live in Australia, or maybe it's just Melbourne, I'm, I'm sure it's probably most of Australia, if you leave your car parked for, I don't know, five to 10 minutes, a spider or family of spiders will probably set up shop in your mirror and you will come out and you will find spider webs across the mirror. So the fact that this is sealed, I'm sure Melbourne spiders would find a way in anyway, but it makes it harder for spiders to settle in there and um, give you spider webs on the, on the uh, mirrors, which is, I don't know. It's little things like that, you know, it's little things like the reverse kick and there's little details like that that I really appreciate about, about a car like this because it's little frustrating things, not a big deal, but someone's actually stopped to think about it and gone, oh, you know what, that thing that cars do that's a little bit frustrating, how can we engineer that to be a little bit easier for people? And I appreciate that. 
So the last thing before we actually go in the car is the way that you lock the car. So you can do it with the key and all that kind of jazz, but if you have the key in your pocket or you've got the phone key activated in your pocket, to lock or unlock the car, you just tap the sensor here on the door handles. And this is one of the first things that I don't particularly like about the car. I find that the mirrors don't fold a lot. So this is the mirror folded, and now if I unlock the car, That is the mirror unfolded. I, I, I would like if the mirrors could fold in a little bit more, which would be nice. But now that it's open, let's uh, jump in the car and see what the car's like on the inside. Welcome to the back seat of the Polestar 2. Now, I am a small person vertically, a little challenge is horizontally, but I've got tons of headroom, but I think someone like Simon, I mean, he's gargantuan, um, would struggle. So if you are tall, the back seat may not be the most comfortable thing. Um, but here comes Simon. Uh, also, in terms of leg space, I've got plenty, but that's because Simon um, has pushed the seat right back for him. So if you've got a six foot something person in the passenger seat, um, yeah, this is how much leg space you've got, but you would normally have a little bit more leg space. In terms of features, um, fairly straightforward. There's a little pocket on the back of the seat. Um, there's a light, which is nice. Um, again, so it's, that's just touch activated, you know, turn on, turn off. Um, handles, and you've got this in the front as well. My wife hates the fact that our Tesla doesn't have handles to hold on to. Um, I'm sure that's not an indication on my driving style, but there you go. You've got control of the air vents, which is nice, so you can control that. You then have your two USB-C ports, and you've got controls for the heated seats for the passengers which is nice so they don't have to ask the driver to turn on or off the heated seats which is nice uh, the last thing that I'll mention is there is this center thing which is normally for the axle in a petrol car uh, because this car wasn't it's actually for the drive shaft. it's for the drive shaft I'm being told I um, so the central thing in most electric cars that have been designed as electric from the ground up you don't have this and the floor is flat, which is nice for the middle passenger. But this is not based on an electric foundation from the ground up. Um, I believe Polestar's next, next cars will be, but they have not wasted that space. So as far as I understand, I'm not sure, but as far as I know, this space here is full of batteries. So Polestar has at least made the best of that situation. And yeah, so that's pretty much you've got a pocket for each passenger. Um, the headrests are adjustable, I believe, no? I know the middle headrest is adjustable. And you have the built-in ISO fixtures on both sides, so you can attach a car seat for the kiddies really easily. And you do have this fold-out with a couple of cup holders. Oh, look at that, two cup holders next to each other in a convenient spot. That'll be important when we look at the front of the car. Welcome to the inside of the Polestar 2. Before we start talking about the inside, there was something I forgot to say while we were outside, is that the looks of the Polestar 2 can be quite polarizing. Come on, you love it. Uh, okay, I apologize, I, I, I'll do better. Let's get into the inside. So, I, I like it. it. The thing you will notice, the first thing is when you get in, is that it feels quite closed in. Like, I, find, I would say cozy, other people may say claustrophobic, up to you but yeah i really like the fact that you get in and it's you know it's like you're in like a bit of a cockpit um they use the phrase cockpit like, you know ooh, like i'm a fighter pilot like i know what that's like uh it does go very fast i i i sort of forgot to mention if you want to see a little bit about the launching now it does have a feature called launch control where you put your foot on the brake you put your foot down on the accelerator and then release the brake and um I haven't tried that. I don't think I will try that because when I just put my foot down when we were driving back from Sydney, go check out link above, um, almost, wow, it was like, oh, it goes very fast. Let's just put it that way. Um, let's get back into this. So right in front of you, steering wheel, fairly standard for cars, I believe. Um, you got plenty of options and buttons. On the left-hand side, you got all your cruise control stuff. So this button in the center turns cruise control on and off. The button, uh, the arrow to the right, 
no idea what that does. The button to the no button to the left, no idea what it does. Button to the right, uh, that will turn on the pilot assist, which keeps you in your lane. Then the up and down is you can adjust the speed of the cruise control. Uh, just clicking the buttons will go up or down by five kilometer increments. If you want one kilometer incre increments, click and hold the button. That'll do one kilometer an hour increments and then these buttons over on the right hand side are to adjust the following distance from the car in front of you. On the right hand side of the steering wheel you've got your uh, voice assistant button which actually I mean it's there but you can use the okay she who will not be named or hey she who will not be named to activate it so you can just activate it with the with the voice function and beneath it is it's like an all button so that will turn on your maps in the dash which i really really like i mean i know i'm f tesla doesn't have a dash with a model y and model 3 i can live with it but it is nice to have a dash and particularly having your maps in the dash really nice i really like that feature um, and then on the right hand side you've got the center button here that'll bring up your trip reports and you can get rid of it with the bottom button and then the arrows are for media controls your stalks behind you on the left hand side you've got your indicators so up and down for left and right and you've also got your light settings i would just leave the light settings on auto and it'll take care of that for you on the right hand side you've got the stalk for your windscreen wipers so up at various degrees to adjust the speed down for just a single one and then pull towards you to do a bit of a spritz over on the door we've got your lock controls we've got the mirror controls to adjust the mirrors I know I mentioned this before, but I really do like that the mirrors are closed in and no less chance of there being spiders living in there. It's, 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 it's a really nice touch. Yeah, child lock. Then you've got your memory settings for the seating thing. Now, I'm a bit confused to why you'd need that because different profiles on the car will have different seating uh, settings. So, for example, if I tap on L because I'm in my profile and then select Simon's profile, It'll adjust the mirrors, but also you can see Simon's a lot taller than me, and now I can't reach the pedals. I hope you enjoyed that little bit of humor, Simon, because I know I know you would make fun of me if you were here for that. So let me just go and put it back into my profile, adjust the mirrors, um, and puts me back where I can reach the pedals, which is nice. You've got a sort of standard glove compartment which is nice which is you know just it's a glove compartment a nice thing with the glove compartment is they've got a paper manual a little little shelf there for the paper manual which is quite cool um and then one of the first things that you notice here is the center console now there's some good things and some things i don't particularly like about the center console first of all, we've got this big screen here and we'll get onto that in a little while um, over on the left hand side here yeah, you have a wireless charging pad for your phone so you can just pop it in there and it'll wirelessly charge on the right hand side of it you have two usb ports and the one on the left has got like a little white outline around it and the one on the right doesn't and i think that's because the one on the left is the one that you plug it in for carplay so it does support apple carplay it doesn't support android auto because the whole system here is android auto as well so you kind of got that built in something i don't particularly love about the USB port here thing is the Apple CarPlay isn't wireless, which is fair enough. That's sort of keeping costs down. But in order to have Apple CarPlay going, I've got to plug the cable in to plug my phone in. And then I've got this big cable sort of sitting here. It's an inelegant solution. Um, oh, yeah, no, it's come up and says, yeah, you have to accept CarPlay. Yes, please sign my life away. That's perfectly fine. And the other thing is that you've got these pockets down here. Unlock your phone. Yeah, yeah not right now you've got these pockets on the side here which are really handy so like down here you can um, store stuff and I've got one over on this side so what I do is I should keep my phone down in the pocket down there but then I've got the cable kind of coming up and over it would be nice if there was like a little channel in here that you could pass the cable through it would just be a, a tidier solution um, so I'm not quite sure what what the idea behind that is but but there you go so i'm just going to take that cable out because we don't need the car play for now you then have some buttons and dials here so this is your um uh you know the back fog and, and the front fog defoggers you've got your hazard button this 
button here is to start and stop your audio. Also, the dial is to control the volume. And this will control the volume of your music, but if you're on a phone call, it'll control that as well. You then have your gear shifter. So you've got, you know, back for drive, up for reverse, center for neutral, and you've got a parking brake there. So that's all that stuff there. And then this is the bit that I'm not particularly impressed with. So you've got, and apologies, the sun's coming out, so there's a little bit blown out here. You've got your cup holder here, which it's quite far back. So when I put my water bottle in there, um, and if I'm in sort of like a general driving position, I've got to kind of reach back to get the water bottle. It's not the end of the world, but it just, you know, it would be better if it was a little bit more forward. And there is all the space here that's not doing much. So not sure what's up with that. And then you do have a second cup holder inside the, what would be the storage space. So if you've got your second cup holder in here, you've really got to kind of reach around to get to your second cup holder. And you can cover the single cup holder by just pushing this forward and having an armory. So uh, I'm not sure what the thinking was behind this. I'd, I'd be curious to know what it was, but it's, I don't think it's quite the best solution. Um, but if you're driving by yourself, which most of the time we are, I think that's fine just there. Any other sort of feature, this is quite high doesn't bother me in the slightest. In fact, I quite like just sort of resting my arm here while I'm driving or, or well, I can't really have that, but you get what I'm saying. It's not much to it there, but yeah, that is the center console. And then you've got this center window here and it is going to get fingerprints before the video. I'd rather there weren't fingerprints. So let me show you how you can get rid of those really easily as you tap and hold on the line at the bottom, which is actually the home button. And then it puts the screen in screen cleaning mode. And my OCD can be satisfied to try and clean that and then tap and hold the home button again to deactivate that function. Let's first have a look at the car options here. So first of all, your drive options. Um, you've got one pedal settings down there on the bottom, so you can either have it low, standard, or um, off. Now, for those who aren't familiar, one pedal driving is with an electric car. When you lift your foot off the accelerator, instead of putting your foot on the brake, the car will automatically slow the car down. Um, and the energy from slowing those wheels down, it puts that energy back in the battery. So if you're going downhill, your battery could actually gain percentages, which is pretty darn cool. Um, and creep means that if you have creep on, the car will act a bit more like a standard automatic, where even though you've stopped, it'll still creep a little bit forward and you've got to keep your foot on the on the brake. Whereas with standard and one pedal driving, you take your foot off the accelerator, the car will slow down and come to a stop. I think it's fantastic. I think everyone should do it. Once you get used to one pedal driving, it can take a day or two, but once you get used to it, it is wonderful. So give it a go. Uh, then your steering, you can make it firm, a little less wobbly, all that sort of standard stuff. Then these are all your assisted driving settings. And if any of these settings has got a little three buttons there, um, you can tap on that. And that basically means there's more options and settings to uh, adjust. So for example, here with cruise control, you can have it just the speed limiter, cruise control or adaptive cruise where it will adjust your speed depending on the cars in front of you. Uh, lane keeping aid, road signs, it will read the road signs with the cameras, which is quite nice, um, and bliss, which it'll warn you if there's you know, cars in your blind spot, all that kind of stuff. Um, ready to drive notification, I really like this. So if you're at a set of lights and you're daydreaming a bit, which I tend to do from time to time, and the lights change, it'll give you a little ding, hey, the light's green, wake up and, and go. Charging. Um, Fairly straightforward. Now you'll see here that Polster actually recommends that you leave the charge at 90% most of the time. And this is for most electric cars, not all, like some you, it recommends going to 100, but read what the manual says um, because this will actually tell you. So, because in order to increase the battery's lifespan, you don't want to charge it all the way up to 100 on a regular basis. Obviously, if you're going on a road trip, you can charge it up to 100, but if you're not going to be driving long distances, you may as well just charge up to 90 on a daily basis. You can also set schedules, which is pretty cool. So you could, let's say you're on a 
time tariff with your power and your electricity is most expensive between three o'clock and nine o'clock for argument's sake. You could set your car to, even though you've plugged it in, not to start charging until nine o'clock when the power is cheaper. So that's a really nice function to have there. And then more, I'm not going to go through this in detail, but you can see it's all fairly standard there. You can control the interior lights and that kind of stuff. While we're here, I do actually want to just go back one moment and talk about the UI and the basic look and feel of it. Because as an Apple fanboy, I'm not a fan of blocky big buttons in a software UI. But as much as aesthetically it's unpleasing to me, I can see a practical logic to it in that when you're driving and you need to quickly see a setting and you need to change it, having a big blocky button is actually a lot more useful than trying to find a small pretty button later on. And also aesthetics, it's a matter of personal choice. So you might really like the look of that. There you go. So that's the car stuff, um, the camera is actually quite cool. So if I turn the cameras on there, you can see now this is unfortunately part of the plus package. So this is the $6,000 extra package. I understand the reason why Polestar has done the different packages so that people can get the basic car, which is about like $70,000 uh, for the entry level, but then you can add the plus packages and all that sort of stuff. Um, so you've got the plus package, which I'll put a list somewhere around me that shows you all the stuff that comes with the plus package. Um, then you've got the pilot assist package, and I'll show you what comes with that. Um, and then you've got the performance package. And I think the performance package, you have to have the dual motor model to get the performance package because it needs both motors. But so this 360 camera, that's part of the plus one. But once you're in the 360, you can actually tap any of those cameras to see just an individual view of those actual cameras and then just tap 360 go back and then you've also got the settings not a lot of settings here but it's nice that you can adjust the parking assist volume so when it's beep 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 beep, beep, beep when you're getting close to something you can adjust whether how loud that is because some people might find that annoying now i mentioned that this comes with android auto built in and one of the cool things about that is that means that you have the Android Play Store. So you can add third-party apps and log into your Google account on the actual car, which is pretty cool. One thing though is that it is a little bit limited, so you don't have all the apps that are available on CarPlay. So for example, when we go into apps for EV charging, I don't see the EV app or the ChargeFox app in here, which are two of the biggest ones here in Australia. So I'm not sure whether Polestar has to talk to ChargeFox and EV or EV have to, Folks, talk to each other and try and get them on here because it'd be nice to have. But going back to you having a look at some of the apps that I've installed, so I've put on Spotify, radio, you've got Apple CarPlay, phone settings, um, PlugShare. So I've got PlugShare just installed on here, which is handy. Now, the Google navigation does show you charges as well, but it's nice to have this extra thing. The one thing is, is that this is... A bit of a cut down version of PlugShare. So, for example, if I go and say, right, well, show me what charges are nearby me. And let's say we want to go to uh, Woolworths and Fisherman's Bend, um, it shows me when the last check in was there. It doesn't show me more information, but I suppose, look, you know, it shows you a, a rating, it shows you how many charges are there, what speed, BYO cable. And what's nice is you can then just tap navigate. It'll ask you, okay, you normally use Google Maps, but you want to use Wave? And I'm like, no, 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 just keep using Google Maps. And there we go. It goes ahead and navigates to the charger for me. So that's pretty straightforward. But I don't even need that because if I actually just go into the normal maps, you can see up here you've got charger, food, and they've put charger there first. If I tap on that, the Google Maps will go and try and find as many charges around here and some nice features so for example the charge fox one it shows me that two out of the two are available which is nice um, and you can if you want to see it also shows me one of them is out of service so win some lose fun charge fox if you want to see more about this be sure to watch the video of simon and myself driving up and to sydney and back because we covered a lot of this in that video but i do like the google maps that are built into the car i think i think they're quite clever so then if we wanted to navigate to say um sydney harbour bridge so 
Okay, Google, navigate to Sydney Harbour Bridge. Navigating to Sydney Harbour Bridge. Now, what I like about this is that it's going to show me, hey, you're going to run out of juice at about the a little bit after the halfway mark. Um, and so you do want to add charging stops. So I can say, right, add charging stops. And I could change the settings, like it's showing tolls there, but I could say, right, well, don't charge with tolls. And it works out the route for me. It says, right, well, stop at Avenal for 15 minute charge, then stop at Banawatha North, and you'll be at this percent, that percent, that percent. And so it works it all out for me. And I go, start. And off we go. And you can see there in the middle, it'll show you the direction you need to go. And if I bring up the maps, it'll show me the maps in total, which is pretty darn cool. So I, I, I like the maps. I think, I think, um, oh look, there's always more settings that they could add, but I think they, they do a pretty darn good job. And then if we go into just the normal home, one of the features that I really like it is the range assistant. So you can have this going while you're driving and you can see, you know, uh, how economical or not economical you're driving um, and how much range you're actually going to get. And that brings me onto another topic, which is if we go into the settings for the car and you can see you've got network, internet, Bluetooth, sound, display, all this sort of stuff. Network internet, so the car comes with a free LTE connection for the first three years. So you've got free connection for three years. After that, um, so Pulsar, they're not sure, well, they're not not sure what's going to happen, but they there will be a charge after three years, but they're not sure what the charge will be, but it will be nominal is what they've said. To give you an idea, um, on my Tesla, I pay t 10 or $11 a month for the internet connection, so it'll probably be about that much. I don't hold me to that because I don't know, but we'll see in three years time. Uh, also comes with roadside assistance. I think they said three years or five years of roadside assistance. So it, it, it comes with a lot of um, five year warranty on the car, eight year warranty on the battery, which the eight year warranty on the battery is fairly stock standard, but the five year warranty on the car, that's nice. Um, yeah, some nice, some nice added stuff that, that it might be in the bottom of the brochure, but 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 I think it's worth noting. But what I wanted to show you here is, if we go into system, and then we go into software update, this I think is one of the best features of modern cars today. And my fingerprints are not my favorite thing about modern cars, but so the, the sample car that I got to drive up and down from Sydney, there was an issue with it. And because it was a fleet, I won't bore you with the details, but basically the car that I drove didn't have um, all of the latest software updates. Mine was on 2.4. You can see that this car is on 2.9. And if we tap on the release notes, you can see that there's actually a ton of features and improvements that have come from software updates. Now they warn you about, you know, it depends what region you're in and you might go get all the functions, but let's, let's have a look at some of these. So for example, 2.9, um, YouTube app was added. So the YouTube app was built in as a standard, um, significant upgrades, to the range assistant app, recent energy consumption graph can now show you the last 20, 40 and hundred kilometers, improved algorithm for projecting range, um, navigation. So the car that I was using when I brought Apple maps up, it didn't come up in the display, but with all the cars that are up to date, um, you get the Apple Maps in the display, phone call information now shown on home screen title. You know what? The fact that Polestar are making over the air up, so you don't, I think with one or two of these, you had to take the car in, but for most of these, they just come over the internet. And in fact, you can actually do it directly off the cellular. You don't even have to connect to Wi-Fi. It takes a bit longer, uh, about an hour to an hour and a half. But yeah, it's the fact that they're constantly improving the car, I think is a really, really great thing. It's, it's you're buying the car and a year later, it's a better car. Like that's, that's new. That's a, that's a new way of thinking in terms of new functions, new features for the car that just come over the air for free. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just, it's something that I think is well worth keeping in mind about cars. And if you're looking at any brand or any type of car, ask what sort of 
update options they have and, and, and whether they will be getting updates and all that kind of stuff. And, and most of the cars, you know, they, they, they do get them, but, but just make sure that the one you're getting does because I think it's important. CarPlay, all fairly stock standard in terms of the function. So you go in here and there's your maps. Um, I listen to podcasts quite a lot. So there's my podcast app. Uh, there's my messages. And if I tap on here, you can see that it's giving me access to quite a few of the apps that I've got built in that support CarPlay. And so even here, so for example, I could use a better route planner um, to... Let's actually, oh, and it's remember, it's, so this is kind of cool. So I think it's actually remembering my last sign in, which is, which is pretty nice. And so let's go and see, uh, well, when it makes sense. and it, it's logged into the car. So it's seeing the car's battery percentage. That's, that's pretty cool. So I, I, I like the fact that it's integrated enough and it's showing me all the routes and, can I tap on those routes or can I tap on all? Can I see information? Oh, no. Oh, ah, what have I done? No, let's just say. No, no, I can't tap on any of those. I can see alternates. Ah, okay, so it showed me just alternates. No, and if I go start. So that's pretty cool. No, it doesn't come up in the maps. That, that, it, see, it'd be nice if a better route planner came up on the maps in the dash as well. Um, but oh, I suppose you could, you could just take this and move it to Apple Maps or Google Maps and, and it would do it. But, but that's, that's pretty cool how, how the whole interface works. Um, right, well, look, I could play around with this for, for quite some time, but I think that pretty much covers, oh, wait, door handles. Yeah, so if you, if you drive a Tesla, no buttons, you have an actual door handle to get in and out of the car. I'm not fussed, but it's worth mentioning because people notice it. Um, up here you have some lights. So the center one turns on both lights and you can turn on individual lights. Uh, if you want sort of lighter lights, not so bright lights. Yeah, that's it. You've also got an SOS button, which I'm not brave enough to push, but I presume that calls emergency services. And you've got a connect button, which I presume connects you to something or someone I, I don't know uh, maybe that's roadside assist or maybe the SOS is roadside assist um, last thing to look at is climate control so you've got heated seats part of the plus pack um, and so you've got a three setting heated seat for the passenger you've got a three settings heated seats for the driver as well as a heated steering wheel and you've got quite a lot of um, options here in the climate control so you've got eco heater ac recirculation defrost um you know auto maxima whatever um that's going to kick in and affect my audio so i'm just going to put it on low actually um, in parking so you can precondition the car you can also turn the climate on and off from the app unfortunately i wasn't able to get the app up and running but i'll see if i can get some footage somewhere around here so I can show you what that looks like so you can turn the climate on and off um, you can also lock and unlock the car from the app then finally if we look in settings quite a few settings here um, it's quite a rich deep amount of settings for the for the climate control there that's that's pretty cool so you can have it all on auto which I presume it checks the temperature and it adjusts everything turning it all on and off you will also notice behind me that uh, this is, you know, this is the performance model because it's got the gold seat belts. I think the gold seat belts look really nice. And whilst I wouldn't pay for the performance pack to get the gold seat belts, I wish you could get just the gold seat belts on their own because I think they look really nice. You also have down here a button on the right hand side of you to open and close the boot. So just hold that down and opens the boot. And hold it down again. Close the door. Right, so let's go through the driving experience. Um, I'm going to try and use Apple Maps it's because I so I've used the Google in the driving display but I want to see what it looks like with Apple Maps so if we just go in here and where would you like to go Williamstown getting directions to Williamstown um, yep cool 
and there we go we now have the apple maps in there so put your foot on the brake put the car into reverse your cameras come up and oh, also i will mention that the car does have um uh, i don't know what it's called but basically when you're pulling out of a spot when you're reversing out uh, cross traffic alert i think it's called so when you are pulling out if there's cars driving past you it'll dee -dee 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 and give you a warning and already i'm going the wrong way so let's indicate here and away we go now i do apologize as usual the sun is going to be all over the place with this so hopefully um, i'm not going to be too blown out um, when the sun comes on to me and I've I've tried to mitigate that as best as possible with the camera settings but you know it is what it is in fact I can tell you right now the sun is really right on me now but um, yeah we'll see how we go so to get your normal dash you can see there that on the left hand side it's showing me my speed and the speed signs along the way so now i have confirmed with polestar that it is using the cameras to actually see what the speed is around you so it reads the speed signs and i have actually found that it can be a bit and i've spoken to them and, and, and this will apparently get better with software um but sometimes it can get a little bit confused so if i'm on a road that has a side road so for example um, one of the roads here in melbourne is a road called north road and that road is 70 k's an hour but the road right next to it there's a little side road which is 50 k's an hour and sometimes the cameras get a bit confused and the car will tell me oh no you should be going 50 when it knows that it's a well it doesn't know when, when i know it's a 70 k zone if that makes sense so we're just getting onto the Westgate Bridge here and get up to 80 now in terms of speed whoo doggy um, this is the performance model uh, it it goes rather fast so now to turn on adaptive cruise control I push the button on the left hand side of the steering wheel and that has turned on adaptive cruise now it's turned it on at 75 kilometers an hour and if I just push up once it adds it to 80 and then to turn on the lane keep assist i push the button to the that's pointing to the right on the left hand side of the steering wheel and that's not turned on the lane keep assist and that's not going oh there's a big plane coming into land i do sorry i get distracted easily um i do find that the lane keep assist generally wants to keep me a little bit more over to the left than I'm used to like I find on the Model Y that I normally drive it actually keeps me a little bit more to the right um, again this is all perception so I've got no idea where it's actually keeping me and I do find that the you know keep your hands on the steering wheel alerts that you get with the Pulsar 2 can be quite um, intense so if I so I've got my hands on the wheel so notice I've got my hands on the wheel but I'm just not going to give any um, I'm not going to do any sort of jiggling on on the wheel so it's going to think that my hand's not there because it's not feeling a little bit of back and forth and you see there it's turned orange and it's going to turn red and beep at me very very yep see there you go so it's only about 10 or 15 seconds before the car will say hey put your hands back on the steering wheel so you do have to hold the steering wheel but it's not just hold the steering wheel in fact this is really cool so that car just pulled out in front of us and the adaptive cruise and the lane keep assist managed that perfectly so they were indicating the car saw that that car pulled out in front and my car adjusted to slow us down to make sure that we were you know everything was fine so if cars are coming into your lane all that kind of stuff no issues whatsoever i found i have found and this is true of, of all cars is that if you're on a road that doesn't have particularly good lane markings um, then the lane keep assist does struggle a bit and particularly I know this little stretch I've just come off the Westgate in Melbourne they're doing huge construction on here which they've been doing for years I mean I don't know I mean, it seems to take a heck of a long time but that's neither here nor there oh pretty colors um, yeah so the lane markings here 
are confusing to a normal person, so I'm not surprised that it's a little bit confusing to a car as well. Let me just get off of here, and then we will probably just drive back and see how that looks. Um, so again, to bring up that display, you just push down and there, there's your maps in there. And so that is getting here with Apple Maps. And see, the cars come to a complete stop. I've never, I have not touched the brakes the entire time I was driving. I was just using the adaptive cruise to make that happen. And unfortunately, I don't know how well you're going to see that on the dash because there's probably some really nasty reflections going on there. Apologies for that. Um, but yeah, this is this is the safest way I can think of to, to drive with with a camera mounted here with the GoPro here. So you can see that. I mean, I could mount a proper camera, but then I wouldn't be able to see the dash. And I just don't think that's safe in, in non-controlled environments. So you can see there that little bit of orange that's showing that I'm pulling energy out of the battery. And as I speed up, I'm pulling more energy out of the battery. You then do have blind spot warning. So you get the little orange glow on the mirrors to warn you that there is a car in your blind spot. And there you see it's all in white because I was using the adaptive cruise to slow myself down. But you could actually use um, the voice assistant to turn on the heated seats or the heated steering wheel, which again, those come as part of the plus pack. I think they don't come as standard, but take it from me, you're, just, you're getting the plus pack. If you're getting this car, just get the plus pack at least. Um, and probably the, 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 the one with the adaptive cruise and the, the pilot assist, just, just get those two packs. It's, I think they add so much functionality and features, it's, it's a no-brainer. Another feature that, again, is good for safety, but scared the bejesus out of me when I did it the first time, is the collision avoidance feature. So we were staying at a Airbnb um, up in Queenscliff and they happen to have like a shrub in the back of their parking bay where we parked the car and so it was a bit tight and it's a shrub you're not going to crash a car into a shrub but it's the cameras obviously obviously saw it as a solid object and when and this happened one other time when I was backing up into a charger backing up towards a charger not into the charger I should probably clarify that it happened again once when I was backing up to a charger where I obviously got just a little bit too close for the car's preferences and when the collision avoidance things kicks in in fact I might I don't know if it works forwards so that's that but when it actually stops you like it stops you from bumping into a wall or something behind you the sound it sounded like we hit some, like I thought we'd hit something. Like it was like, it was like, like it sounded like we hit something. So I, I, I don't know, I don't think Pulsar really can fix that or change that. I, I'm not even sure if they should, because you do want to really be aware that, but it, yeah, it's, um, it, if it's meant to scare you to stop, it worked. So that was the driving experience of the Polestar 2. I hope that was helpful. I hope it was useful. I hope you learned a few things. Um, let's step outside and talk uh, sort of final thoughts. And through the miracle of editing, I will be in a completely different location when I step out of this car. Magic. So, in summation, what are my thoughts on the Polestar 2. 
I think it's a really nice car. It's a really, really nice car. It's not for me because I needed the more space of like the SUV type Model Y and I'm very keen to have a play with the Polestar 3 when it comes out. Um, so just, just from that, it, it doesn't suit my needs. And I think also fundamentally, I like to describe the, the Tesla as, as an iPad with wheels. And for, for a nerdy, geeky person like me, that's the kind of car, like I like all the techy stuff and I like all that bits and bobs. Whereas this is more of a car person's car that happens to be electric. That's also a really nice car. So I think if you are a car person and you're really into car stuff, and particularly if you like the knobs and the buttons and all that sort of stuff. This car is wasted on Lee. It's a car for people like me. Oh, sorry. I meant to be... Oh, was I, was I talking too much? <laughs> Simon will not be helping me film all of these because he's a very busy person, so don't get used to seeing him in front of the camera. I think I'll just use the summation that I film inside the car later when Simon goes back to work. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so this is a car person's car that happens to be electric, and it's a very nice car person's car that happens to be electric. I'm keen to try the uh, Polestar 3 when it comes out and see if that, those features sort of fit better to the, the needs of a, a family type stuff. Not that you can't do family st type stuff in here, but it's not ideal for that. Um, yeah, so if you are in the market, definitely have a look at the Polestar 2. I think a lot of people are going to like it. Um, yeah, so that's my look. If you have found this, I hope this was helpful. I hope this was useful. If it has been, please like and subscribe. If you have subscribed already, thank you so much for your support and we'll uh, catch you on the next one. Safe and happy driving. Take 738. Not there yet. Hi, I'm Lee. Welcome to the channel. I hope, what, what are you doing? Win some, lose some, not win fun. Win fun? I don't know. Simon has informed me that because this is the performance package, I should be mentioning that this has Brembo, bre, 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 those brakes. It's written on it. Bre, Brembo brakes. So, I, I struggle with words. Uh, so it has Brembo, brem, bre, Brembo. If, if any South Africans are watching this, there, there was an old ad for, for a product called Red Row and there was a kid like was trying to Red Row and I love my Red Row. South Africans will love that. Anyway, th this is my Red Row. I can't say it. Brembo. 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 Brembo brakes. It comes with Brembo brakes, the performance uh, package. Um, and also it does come with the gold seat belts, which I really love. I'd love to get the gold seat belts without having to pay for the performance stuff. But yeah, so that's kind of cool. Get a toolkit and just swap them out. Just spray paint them. <laughs> I'm sure that'll be fine. That won't look cheap at all. Um, okay. And this time we mean it. Driving. And my GoPro just fell down, so let's pull over. Oh, that's going to be reflective as a reflective thing. At the boot. Stay with me, Simon. Stay with me. 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 A feature that I really, <laughs> very, very funny. Ha, ha, ha. Interesting how it's showing me a petrol station. That's kind of funny. Like, why? But let's have a look at the front here because. Thanks, Danny <sighs> you're behind the camera, you're supposed to be silent. Oh, sorry. Um, let's have a look. See, this is why I don't worry about AI so much. Because if, if the artificial intelligence was so intelligent, it would know that I'm in a complete electric car. Excuse me, and show me those two petrol stations. I mean, you could show them if they were food stations, like, oh, there's food available there. I mean, it's petrol station food, so I'm not sure how foody you'd qualify that as food. Um, but, yeah. Oh, well, see, this is why we have headphones when we're recording. They would have seen it in the beer. Anyway. Okay. Take 37. In 400 meters, turn right onto the ramp to M1. Oh, I forgot to turn that off. I. Okay, hopefully I get a set of lights. It's just my opinion. I don't know that. Oh. Ah, sorry.
put the car into gear, cameras come on, which is nice, and you're not recording, you twit. Dark grey t-shirt, light grey hoodie, sort of brown, ah, oh, let's try that again. Jeez, I swore, that's unlikely. What was I doing? I was showing something there. Oh, I was show what, what was I? I was showing something somewhere. I don't know how I'm going to cut that in, but let's tr we'll try.